Back in October, I did a video introducing the beta release of the Spartan Forge app. The app release combined mapping, journaling, weather forecast, historical weather, and location intel in addition to a machine learning based deer movement prediction. Step forward a few months, and now we have the first major upgrade to that app infrastructure. This helps resolve some of the questions or issues that anybody might have had over the last fall, but it also adds some pretty important major features and makes the overall app structure better suited for additional layer information to be added over time. The Intel tab now has a slightly overhauled look. The color palette and layout is now much easier to read. You don't have to adjust any settings in your phone. First and last light times have now been added. And when you expand any given day in the weather forecast, you can now see the entire hour by hour forecast broken out in an accordion view instead of having to use a slider on those individual days. Switching to the historical sub tab, you still have the ability to look at a wind rose over recent time periods or look at month specific wind roses and weather data to aid in hunt planning and scouting. The Intel tab also has state specific hunting information as well as a starting point of what types of browse to keep an eye out for when you're out in the woods. And of course, the deer movement prediction and pattern type is still displayed on the Intel tab, now with some helpful diagrams which you can expand and they really help explain what the prediction information means as it relates to the GPS collar study data that it's derived from. That should help guide you on how to interpret that information and then how to use it on your actual hunts. Now, let's move over to the mapping tab for e-scouting, navigation, and waypoint management. The update here is one that I'm pretty excited about. There's a whole new layout that's, in my opinion, much more intuitive and easy to display exactly what you want to see, but nothing that you don't. The primary map display is now known as the Lambda layer which allows for quite a bit of customization. To do that customization, tap on the settings icon next to the GPS icon. Here you can choose what you want your background map to be, and you can choose from three different satellite imagery views, topo, or the UAV map, which is aerial imagery as opposed to satellite. The UAV imagery for me is the most exciting because where it exists, it's phenomenal. And it often has different date ranges to choose from. In this particular location I'm looking at right now, the most recent imagery is from September 13th, 2021, but I can also look back at April 1st and see the leaf off imagery, and I can see options going all the way back to 2016. The areas with heaviest coverage on this aerial mapping currently are in the northeast, the southeast, plus coverage spreading out around major metropolitan areas. Technically, it covers about 45% of the land mass and 80% of the population in the continental U.S. right now gets updated every six months, and it contains between one and eight years worth of historical imagery to cycle through. That said, Spartan Forge is also working directly with that imagery provider to start providing additional coverage around more popular hunting areas. For instance, the Allegheny is currently being flown as this video is being recorded, and there's a big list of additional places of interest to be covered over time. Now, once you've chosen your background map, you can choose whether or not to add a hybrid overlay and adjust the opacity of that overlay. That just gives you some more data on roads and topography info. At this point, you can also choose whether you want to overlay trails, agricultural data, public and private boundaries, and contour lines. The trails overlay will show some of the more prominent trail systems, primarily in the bigger federal lands. This agricultural overlay shows what type of crop has been documented in those given properties. Note. This information is from the previous year, which may or may not be the same as the current year. And in areas without any ag, this overlay will give a description of the overall habitat type. Public and private land boundaries are pretty self-explanatory, as are the topo line overlays, the contours. You can choose to display any combination of those you want at any time. Once you've made all your selections and you have your customized overlay, it's pretty easy to go back in at any point in time and change what layers are actually displayed. So for me personally, my Lambda layer would typically have UAV imagery if available, and if not, one of the other satellite background maps, I usually have that hybrid overlay turned off. I uh, like public land boundaries and contours. It helps reduce clutter by just hiding some of those things I'm not interested in looking at. Now on the flip side, if I'm in a scenario where I wanna go knock on some doors, maybe I wanna get permission to go through a piece of private or maybe even hunt that private, I'll toggle on that property ownership boundary layer. Now, one new feature with that property ownership layer is that you are able to select a given property and mark in the app your permission status. So after tapping on one of those landowner names, you can select permitted, which will turn the property boundary green, conditioned, 
which you can add notes to, and it creates a yellow border or no axis, which turns the property boundary red. If the data source notifies of a change in ownership, then the boundary will automatically turn to purple, indicating you may want to go check in and re-up that permission or meet up with the new landowners. Now for waypoints, long tapping on the screen is one way to go ahead and create them, and it'll open up a dialog to customize the pin, add notes, or add an image. However, if you want to take a shortcut and just quickly add a generic waypoint, you can actually just double tap on the compass icon. That'll drop a pin wherever your cursor is currently located. If you want to quickly mark your current location, just make sure that the map is centered on your location by quickly tapping on the GPS icon, then double tapping on that compass icon and drop the pin. Some additional features for waypoints can be found by just tapping on one of them. You can share the waypoint to your friends, or you can just copy the GPS coordinates and then go ahead and paste it on a text message or anywhere else. You can choose to hide certain waypoints. So maybe you have your deer hunting areas, but you don't want those cluttered up with turkey hunting waypoints throughout the fall, for instance. They can be unhidden back in the My Content tab. There's also now the option for a distance to pin, which, just as it sounds, gives you that straight line distance from that pin to your current location. Now, let's review that compass icon that's positioned in the lower left. You can also move it to the lower right if you want, if that's a more comfortable reach for your thumb. To do that, you would just hold on to that compass until it starts floating and then just move it over and drop it to the other corner. By default, that compass will tell you where north is. It'll also tell you with a little blue arrow around the compass where that current wind direction is pointing on the map. And just over top of the compass, you'll be able to see the actual wind speed and direction typed out. Tapping on the compass will bring up some tools. You have the option to choose between orienteering mode, which is where the map always points wherever you're facing, or just north always up mode. You can start to record a track, or you can use the ruler tool to measure distances and areas. You can also name those to keep them displayed for certain custom routes or boundaries. And lastly, you can also swipe over the compass, and when you do, you get three additional basic map views, a satellite, topo, and a hybrid. Where that could be useful is if you have that fully configured map on your main lambda layer, but then you wanna just be able to quickly check out any of those other views, you can do so, without having to go back into the full customization menu of that Lambda layer. And there are also some lesser known viewing tricks with the app. You can slide two fingers across the screen to view the map at an angle. It's not quite true 3D, but it shows a different viewing perspective. That said, an actual 3D view is something that's actively being tested right now. You can also zoom in and out with just your thumb. To do so, quickly double tap, but on the second tap, you wanna actually keep your thumb on the screen and then slide it up and down. The goal here is to just be able to do about any basic navigational function or viewing option without needing to have to use your other hand. Tapping the My Content tab at the bottom will bring up not just your current waypoints like I mentioned earlier, but also journal entries if you've happened to geotag any of those into the map, lines, polygons, and tracks. Tapping on the Tools icon will do the same thing as single tapping on the compass to bring up the orienteering, tracking, and measurement functions. Now, there are offline maps as well. To get to those, you would go ahead and tap the little three bar menu in the upper right and then click on offline maps. And then you can click the plus icon in the bottom right to go ahead and add your custom offline map. And you can choose between either a low resolution or a high resolution version. The high resolution version will be a smaller area, but it'll retain more detail. And one thing to note with these offline maps, initially on this update, you'll just be able to download one of the basic maps, but eventually you will be able to download those custom Lambda layer options as well. And now let's go ahead and move on from that mapping tab to the journaling tab in the lower left. The biggest update for me on the journaling tab is that, of course, whenever you go ahead and add a journaling entry, it'll take the date, the time, and the location, and it'll auto-populate all the weather information for that entry. But that information now includes the wind direction as well as that wind speed. So in addition to now documenting the hunt details, you can actually plug in, let's say, a trail camera photo from the last fall. And you plug in the time on that trail camera photo and the location on the map, and you can quickly see what the weather conditions were and what that wind direction was when that deer was moving past that camera. And of course, in addition to the auto-populating information on those journaling entries, you can add your own notes, you can add photos to those journaling entries, you can add specific information about deer that you happen to see on that hunt, and there's a good chance your phone probably also has a talk to text option on the keyboard so you can go ahead and actually just talk into the phone to populate all those notes. A couple of common questions I know I've received is number one, is there going to be a web version? And yes, that actually is being tested right now. Should be out sometime in the near future. 
And the other question is, if you have a whole bunch of waypoints currently saved, is there a quick and easy way to just go ahead and upload all of those waypoints into Spartan Forge? And that also is being tested over the last several weeks at this point, and it's gonna be implemented pretty soon. One caveat is that depending on what app you're using right now, and the amount of data that's saved when you export the waypoints from your current service, there might be some things that aren't exported. For instance, you might not get data saved for like the color or type of waypoint that you use, but some of the notes and waypoint names that you have and dates and things like that should still come through. And be on the lookout for a fifth map option that shows a wind overlay. Basically a map that gives you directional arrows showing on a macro level how the wind is moving different directions in different regions of the county and the state that you're looking at and color coding based on the wind speed. Currently the Spartan Forge app is $39.99 and you can also get a 20% discount off of that with the code DIY. If you guys have any additional questions, please drop them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to go ahead and do my best to answer them. And thanks for watching.